Hey everybody, my name is Kate Furman and I am a jeweler and an artist in Greenville, South Carolina. I am currently standing in front of my studio in the village of West Greenville at 547 Perry Avenue. Here is the front of my space. And I'd love to give you a tour around so you get to know me and my studio and my work. As you enter my space, this is the shop and it's full of drawings and jewelry and pieces ready to go, pieces ready for you to give as gifts. I have t-shirts, I have watercolors, I have artwork, I have note cards, I have fine jewelry, and I also do a lot of custom jewelry. To give you a tour of the rest of my shop, these are some of my drawings. This is some of my jewelry tools. I have a photography set up here. I have some woodworking tools such as a lathe, my drill, my soldering station, casting, some more drawing examples on the wall. And, of course, my lizard, Stanley the Terrible, who is taking a nap right now. But the point of today is that I was gonna give you a lesson on doing simple watercolor washes. So give me a second as I get all set up. And what I'm gonna show you is how to do some very simple, whimsical, illustrative drawings, such as these. So this was one of the originals, and you can see I have just a simple pen and ink line and then some watercolor washes. I can then take them and scan them and I make them note cards, which I sell here in my shop and also online. Everything is available online and I'm also open by appointment. So those are just a few of the examples. To get started, what I'm gonna show you that I have is my watercolor palette. I have two different sizes. This is a good travel size. This is my kind of everyday carry around size. Um, these little pods are great. If they, if they go empty, you can just fill them back up with the tubes, let them dry, and they're good to go. As far as paper, I like using a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper, anything that's a little bit heavier. <clears throat> you can hear the weight of the paper. Um, these are artist tiles. I also have watercolor postcards, uh, Bristol board, all sorts of things. Uh, today, I'm gonna be using this Prismacolor drawing pen. It's the 03. You don't have to use this kind. Any kind of drawing pen that's gonna be water, water safe, water tight, permanent, will work just fine. Uh, Micron is another example. You can also use any size. I'm just using the 03 because it's kind of right in the middle of the pack. Um, I, I think it's easy, a nice, easy size line, good to use. So I'm just gonna come up with some vases out of my mind as I'm gonna draw and then show you how I do these simple, uh, whimsical, illustrated drawings. So I'm just going to make up a vase. Give it a little top. Maybe some details. I have a little base here. Maybe have a couple details down here. And then I'm going to start adding in some flowers. I'm going to put some coming out right here in the bottom. Add in some little flowers up here. As the, the more you draw, you start to learn how to shorthand things. You start to learn your way of simplifying. Nice big flower here. And we're gonna add some nice leaves coming out. 
I'll make this kind of a wild, a wild bunch of flowers. And we'll do the next one a lot simpler. All right, probably can leave that just like that. Now I'm gonna do another one here that's gonna be a little bit simpler. I do a more fishbowl style base. And I'm just gonna do some greenery. Coming out of it. Uh, sometimes I think the simplest ones are the best. Do a rose right here. Maybe give the top a little bit of detail. So I have these two really simple line drawings and now I'm gonna add some washes to them. I'm just gonna use this very small paintbrush. You can use you know anything, it doesn't have to be anything too nice. I, I keep my palette really messy because that way I can come in and, and just start using these colors. I never want to use them straight out of the tube. They're too vibrant, too bright. So I use them kind of mixed in with other colors and that kind of tones them down and makes them look more natural. So I like that too, so that I can let one dry and work on the other and go back and forth. So I'm going to kind of start adding some washes. You want them to be, you know, you use more water. Watercolor is meant to be used with a lot of water. You want to be able to see the paper underneath it. You have to save your whites, so you can always add more. You can't take it off as easily. There are some ways you can pull some of the ink back out, but if you save it from the beginning, that's all you have to do. I'm gonna mix in this blue. It has a little bit of green already mixed into it. It'll just kind of dull it down a bit so it looks like a real, a real blue. Don't be afraid to vary your colors as you go across the plant because if you looked at a real plant, they're not all going to be the same colors. I'm also, I'm not, I'm not following the lines exactly. I'm letting, I'm letting it be a little bit more whimsical and more free. I made a little purple here. I like purple. I'm going to let those colors dry and start adding in some of these greens now. Uh, the green is especially important to not use right out of the tube because you want it to have a much more natural feel than that. So I mix in some brown, I'm mixing in some dark blues now. It's gonna play. Art, in my opinion, should be fun. Won't take it too seriously because then it starts to lose its fun. I'm using a little more of a yellow green for some of these leaves here. I'm gonna add some more water so that they start to vary in color. They don't all need to be the same color, so I'm gonna use different greens. And I'm gonna let that one start to dry. We'll come back over here. I think I'm gonna use kind of a brown, brownish red for the vase, but really water it down. Because I, I don't know how much I'm gonna like that. With watercolor, you can always change the color by adding different washes over what you already have. You can mix wet on wet if you want. It's going to let it bleed a little bit more. Or you can wait and let it dry all the way. And then you'll get more of a wash feeling. I'm going to go back over these roses now with a little bit more pigment to make them jump a little bit more. We'll jump off the page. I'm going to do the same thing with the blues now. I'm going to get a little more pigment, maybe change the color of hair, add in a bit more. And then the same with the purple. I like to, to tell beginners, you know, aim for at least three washes on everything because that way you can start to see the layers. Because with watercolor, you really want to see layers, layers of color. I am going to maybe add a little bit of yellows on some of these leaves and then let this one dry. Remember, you're the artist. You can change the colors as you want them. They can look, they can resemble the original. They don't have to be exactly the original. It's your artistic license. 
Over here, this one is so simple. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna add a few more washes to try to give the leaves a little bit more depth. Maybe add a little bit of pigment to the stems. Come back and add some more to the rows. Let it dry. Come back over here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Maybe add a little bit more. Some areas might start to be to be fine at this point. I can add a little bit of blue on top of this purple to deepen it. I think the, the vase needs a little bit more value, a little more, something to show that it's round. We'll talk about making things round another day. And then I never use an actual black. I, I always use like a dark gray, mix up colors, mix up browns, purples, blues to try to get a, you know, a very dark value. But I like this kind of dark, dark blue for my shadows. Let it just look washy. You can always go back in and add some more water. Maybe bring in, there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some shadowing under the details of the vase. I'm gonna let that one sit. And now I'm gonna give this pot just a little bit of depth with a really light wash. I don't wanna, I want this to look like a clear glass. So I'm not gonna overdo with the wash here. You can come in if you want, start adding a little bit of texture. You can add little dots and dashes of, of your values if you want to. You can add in some more darks. And just add, just selectively, because you can't take the darks out as easily. So you save them for the last and then you put them in just the places that are the most important to kind of pull forward. You can always add some more leaves that don't have the pen behind them if you want, if you want to make it look a little bit more wild. Or you can leave it. And then I might add just a little bit more pigment to some of these watercolors here. Maybe a little green there. I just felt like it needed something. So you can let these dry and as they're drying, if you decide you need to come in and add some more detail with your pen, you can. You might decide it needs a little more or you might decide it's just fine. Remember, these are just, just fun. Everyone doesn't have to be perfect. The more you do, the better you get, and the more likely you are to come up with some that you really like. So once you're comfortable with it and you feel like you're ready, you assign it. Kate Furman and Kate Furman. And then you just set them down to dry. And again, here are some other examples that I showed earlier of some that have dried and that I have then scanned and turned into note cards. So they all have their own personality and they're quirky and they're fun and they make people happy, which is definitely what we need to do in this, in this time in our lives. Thank you all so much for watching and please remember to follow me at Kate Furman, at Kate Furman Jewelry, and at Kate Furman Drawing on Instagram. My website is katefurman.com. See you next time. Bye.